Konnichiwa everyone and welcome to the class. Are you all ready to do Japanese today also? Well, um, we did a lot of things in our previous class. We did past tense of verbs, we did particle de, then we also did the time span, the time period which is kan and a lot of assignments I had given you last time in the previous class. Well, today before I actually start the class, we will review the assignments, we will just go over the assignments and I will do them right here with you and you can check whether you have done them properly or not. So well, here we are. The first assignment that I had given you was match group A with group B which you have been doing all along from lesson 1. So these are some verbs here in the left side in the left column, column A and the meanings of these verbs in column B. You also have verbs in present tense, in past tense and in negative. So please properly try to do them and you could repeat after me as well. Ikimas and the answer is go. Kairimasen not return. Arukimas walk. Benkyo shimasen not study. Nemas sleep. Kimas come. Shimasen not do. Mimashita saw or watched. Yomimas read. Nomimasen not drink. Kikimashita asked or listened. Kaimas buy. Okimas to get up in the morning after a long sleep or wake up as is generally said. Asobimashita played. So well you have the verbs in the present negative and the past forms and the word meanings over here. So you can just check your answers. Also kimas over here as I had explained to you in your previous classes as well. Kimas is used when you are at a point at a place and you come over there. That time ikimas is not used, kimas is used. Kikimas again over here, kikimashita means to listen and also to ask. Well, the next exercise is you have a lot of pictures here and we would like to know what they are doing in the picture. It is very clear you know the verbs. All you have to do is to tell it in Japanese. So well the words or the verbs are the first one is nemas, asobimas. Benkyo shimas. Shigoto shimas. You could also say denwa shimas or kakimas. Any of these could be used over here. In a similar manner for asobimas here, you could also say oyogimas. Then we have arukimas to walk. Yasumimas is to relax, is to take a break, is to take a vacation as well. So over here he is relaxing with his eyes closed. So it's Yasumimas. Then of course you can see over here he is eating. So Tabemas. And what are these people doing over here? All together on a sheet under a tree. Minna picnic oshimas. And then ikimas. Well, the next exercise is
again you have to look at the pictures and tell verbs in past tense, write verbs in past tense. So, please in the last exercise we did mass form which is present tense over here we will do past tense of verbs. The first one is kino gozen rokuji ni okimashita. So, well with past tense of verbs you will use time expressions which are in past. So, please remember that kino, kino means yesterday, gozen rokuji ni okimashita. Kino gozen hachiji ni kaisha e ikimashita. So, working in office over here, kaisha e ikimashita. Over here, gogo juniji yonju gohun kara ichiji yonju gohun made hiru yasumi desu. Now, we have someone drinking tea or coffee. So, well, ototoi juji kocha o nomimashita. Kino gogo shichiji ni kairimashita. Kiyobi no ban hachiji ju gohun ni ban gohan o tabemashita. And then a general statement, mainichi gogo kuji kara juji made terubi omimasu. Another general statement, mainichi juichi ji ni nemasu. So, these are some time expressions. There are a lot of time expressions that you have already covered. So, you could use any of those. For example, kesa, which is today morning, kesa, hachiji ju gohon ni Asa gohan o tabemashita. Asa gohan is your uh, breakfast. Breakfast o tabemashita. So, you can use any of these time expressions over here and change your uh, sentence using proper past tense of verbs. Well, this one is very simple over here. Practice with your partner and ask what they do at this time. The basic exercise over here is for you to speak the verbs that you have done out aloud, practice them with time in past, in present and in negative forms all of it. So, please over here you have the time listed from morning till night. You could ask your friend what they do if they go to school. Well, your exercise can be according to school, according to homework, what time they have lunch, what time they return. Uh, what time they go play, what time they study in the evening, have food in the evening and then sleep or if you are asking your colleague from morning till night what he does, well it could be what time he gets up, what time he goes to office, what time he has his lunch over there, again what time tea in the afternoon, gets back home in the evening, watches TV and then goes to sleep. So, all of it you can do, you can use the verbs according to whom you are asking. There are some of them listed over here. You can see those and do it at home with your partner. So, now I hope all the exercises were done at home properly and most of it was all right. Now, I have a small uh, radio conversation for you. Well, listen to the conversation and then let us see how much you have understood. あしたは妹さんの誕生日ですね。そうです。田中さんの誕生日はいつですか？私の誕生日は2月の11日です。ああ、私の誕生日も2月です。何日ですか？20日です。So well, you heard the conversation just now, and I will just go over the conversation right here with you. So far, you have told. You have told your name, you have told about your, your um, hobbies, your subject, what you want to do, all those things, but you have not told about your birthday. 
So, well today we will talk about your birthday, how to tell people when your birthday is. So, this conversation is between two people again over here and they are just talking, it is a simple normal uh, daily conversation A and B. So, ashita wa imoto san no tanjoubi desu ne. So desu. Tanaka san no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Watashi no tanjoubi wa nigatsu no ju ichi nichi desu. Ah, watashi no tanjoubi mo nigatsu desu. Nan nichi desu ka? Hatsuka desu. So, all these words you have already covered, we have already done. The new word over here is tanjoubi, which is birthday. So, how do you tell about your birthday? Well, this is the explanation in English, translation in English. Anyway, you get stuck with your dialogue in Roman, you can look this up. And of course, this is again in the script and you can see a lot of new kanji characters and hiragana. So, you can practice that, get used to kanji characters now. Well, before that, I want you to do something which is important for this and that is you need to know your months. So, we have January, February till December. It is very simple in Japanese. It is numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 and 11. Okay. So, after this you just need to put gatsu. Counter for month is gatsu. So, you can go like this 1 gatsu, January, 2 gatsu, February, 3 gatsu, March, 4 gatsu and it is not yon gatsu or yo gatsu, it is shi gatsu which is April, go gatsu which is May, roku gatsu which is June and again an exception over here, shichi gatsu which is July and not nana gatsu, not nana gatsu over here, shichi gatsu July, hachi gatsu August, ku gatsu September, ju gatsu October, ju ichi gatsu November and ju ni gatsu which is not written over here, well I will write it over here, it is not in serial but well I am sure you will understand, ju ni gatsu is December. So, it is very simple in Japanese, you just need to put the numbers over here and gatsu and that will give you the month equivalent would be January, February till December. So, please just repeat it after me once and you will get it right before we do this exercise. Ichi gatsu, ni gatsu, san gatsu, shi gatsu, go gatsu, roku gatsu, shichi gatsu, hachi gatsu, ku gatsu, ju gatsu, ju ichi gatsu and in the end we have ju ni gatsu. So, these are the 12 months which are very simple marked by gatsu. Ni gatsu ichi gatsu means January, February and getsu means month. So, please remember that is different. Both are the character is this getsu 
or gatsu, two readings for the same character. This means January, February and gatsu itself means, getsu itself means month. So, now we go back to our exercise over here, anata no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? You know the word anata, tanjoubi is new I just told you, birthday wa itsu means when desu ka? Jugatsu, we did just now, Jugatsu is October, Jugatsu no Jugo Nichi desu. The Nichi part you have done in your previous lessons. So, well Jugo Nichi is the 15th, Jugo Nichi Jugatsu desu. So, 15th of, 15th of October is what it means over here. Hi, so we have Anata no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Anata no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? So, you can have over here Otousan, Otousan no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Okaasan no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Sensei no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Tomo dachi no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? And as in the exercise over here, imoto, imoto no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? So, for anata, you can replace it for, replace it with any of these words that you have learned and also over here it is given Ichigatsu Suitachi, Sangatsu Mikka, Gogatsu Nijugo Nichi, Hachigatsu Futsuka. So, you have done all these, all these you have done Anata no tanjoubi wa itsu desu ka? Itsu means when. So, you have to write the month. Month and then you have to write the date. So, month you can write with, you have done ichigatsu, ichi ni go hachi. Gatsu and then date you have done already. So, it could be Sui Tachi or Ju Go Nichi or any date you want to put over here and this. So, now you can practice very easily. Oto san no tanjoubi wa ichigatsu. Suitachi desu. Okaasan no tanjoubi wa hachigatsu jugo nichi desu. So, you can practice like this with your partner. Also, you can ask anata no tanjoubi wa ichigatsu suitachi desu ka? You can make a question of this as well. Instead of itsu, you can put the date and then put ka over there. So, well, you can practice with your partner, you can practice dates like this, you can practice months like this, you can practice all the vocabulary that we have done earlier and do your conversation. Well, now in our previous lesson, in our last lesson, we did koko, soko asoko and doku for place. If you remember, koko means here, soko means there, asoko means over there and doku means it is a question word, interrogative word meaning where. So, well, today we will do exactly this, but in a different manner. We did Hon wa 
soko des. So, it just says hon wa soko des. Hon wa doko desu ka? Hon wa soko des. Hon wa doko desu ka? Hon wa asoko des. Now, over here you will see something is written. You bin kyoku wa asoko ni arimasu. So, there is this particle ni, there is wa, there is arimas. Arimas is a verb as you can see from mass form over here. It is a complete verb and what does it show? It shows existence of an object, of an inanimate object, inanimate thing at a certain place. Now, how is that done? Well, noun 1 wa place ni ari mas. This shows that some noun is at a certain place. Now, this is a pattern noun 1 wa place ni ari mas. This particle ni you have done in your previous lesson with time. If you remember, hachiji ni ikimasu, kuji ni nemasu. So, over here this has a different use, different usage over here, noun 1 wa place ni arimasu. It shows existence of something at a certain place, presence of something at a certain place. So, let us see how it is done. You have this small radio conversation. Please listen to it carefully and then I will try to explain it to you. Suimasen, yubin kyoku wa doko desu ka? Asoko ni arimasu. Ano hanaya no tonari ni arimasu ka? Iie, sore wa ginko desu. Yubin kyoku wa Ginko no tonari desu. Arigatou gozaimasu. Now, did you understand what it said? Well, Rao san says, Sumimasen, yubin kyoku wa doko desu ka? Asoko ni arimasu. Ano hanaya san no tonari ni arimasu ka? Iie. Sore wa ginko desu. Yubin kyoku wa ginko no tonari desu. Arigatou gozaimasu. So, well, sumimasen, you already know, all of you, what it means. Yubin kyoku is post office. Wa doko desu ka? Doko is a question word, interrogative word, which you already know. Asoko ni arimasu. Asoko is over there. It is present over there. It is present over there at that point. Ano hanaya no tonari ni arimasu ka? Is it over there next to the flower shop? No, iie. That is a bank. Sore wa ginko desu. Yubin kyoku wa post office wa ginko no tonari desu. It is next to the ginko and arigato gozaimasu. As it is a very informal conversation, informal situation, maybe on the road, maybe just informally you tap someone and you just ask, excuse me. So, well, you could, you could leave it at arigato, you could also say arigato gozaimasu, the whole thing, thank you very much or just arigato which is thanks. So, now I will explain all of it in detail. You just have a general idea here as to what the conversation was about. This is in Japanese, in the script with kanji and hiragana today and there is no katakana. Of course, there is katakana here for, for names, but in the conversation we do not have a foreign word. So, there is no katakana. So, kanji and hiragana you will see are written together simultaneously and of course, we give space in between words 
because it is easy for us to understand and that English equivalent is here for you explanation is here. So, now we go to our practice which is what we have to do. Now, the practice is you being kyoku wa as you can see you being kyoku wa doko desu ka and in the conversation we had asoko ni arimasu. So, now what you can do is very simply you can replace you being kyoku with other words that you have done. You been kyoku wa doko desu ka? You been kyoku wa doko desu ka? So, simple this is a question you can replace you been kyoku with ginko. Ginko wa doko desu ka? Uh, gakko. Gakko wa doko desu ka? Honia. Honia wa doko desu ka? Gakko you know is a school, ginko is a bank and honia is a book shop. So, well you can ask where are these things placed, where are they? Where is the ginko, where is the gakko, where is the honia? And what will your answer be? In simple words, it will be either it will be either asoko or soko. Those are the only two things you can say because that is all that we have done. So, well, we will do something new today over here. Ginko wa with reference to noun 2, with reference to noun 2, where is it placed? Ni ari mas. Ginko wa noun 2 no mai. No mai ni arimas. Ni arimas you have just done. Ni arimas means it is present at that point. So, where is Ginko present, if you if you just point at Ginko in a very very in a very busy place or in a in an area which has a lot of buildings, how will you explain where exactly Ginko is? So well, Ginko wa Hanaya. Hanaya is the flower shop. Florist Hanaya no mai ni arimas. Ginko is in front of the Hana shop, in front of the flower shop. Ginko wa doko desu ka? Ginko wa hanaya again. Hana ya hon ya shokudo gakko koen. Any of these. Hanaya is your flower shop, hon ya is stationery shop or bookstore, shokudo is your dining hall canteen, gakko school, koen is park. So, ginko wa koen no mai ni arimasu. Ginko wa gakko no mai ni arimasu. Ginko wa honia no mai ni arimasu. So, well instead of just mai which means in front, you can have other locational words like this. They are called locational nouns in Japanese and you could have those no mai mi, no mai, then no naka, no shita, no ue, no ushiro and ni arimasu. So, ginko wa noun 2 no mai ni arimasu, ginko wa noun 2 no shita ni Arimas. Shita means below or under, naka means inside, ue means on top, ushiro means behind and mai means front. Well, there are others as well, we have them for you listed here in this lesson. You can go through those and you can ask and answer these questions. Now, over here just see 
look at this over here. I will ask you and you let me know what it is. Jisho, which is a dictionary, wa doko desu ka? Now, if I ask you the position of Jisho, where it is placed, where would you say it is? Well, it is on top of the table. So, so the Jisho is on top of the table. Jisho wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Jisho wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Jisho wa tsukue no shita ni arimasu. Is that okay? Jisho wa tsukue no jisho wa this jisho over here wa tsukue no ushiro ni arimasu. This jisho over here jisho wa tsukue no mai ni arimasu. So, that is how you would show position of a certain object or thing. For example, a very simple one I have a chalk here in my hand. So, well chalk wa chalk wa te no ue ni arimasu. Like this chalk wa te no shita ni arimasu which means below or under. Chalk wa te no mai ni arimasu. This is from my side mai ni arimasu. Chalk wa te no ushiro ni arimasu. In a similar manner kokuban. This is a blackboard. So, blackboard wa kokuban wa watashi no ushiro ni arimasu. It is behind me. So, this is how you could practice. Well, now let me see if you got it right. So, this is a pen, pen. Now, tell me pen wa, pen wa doko desu ka? Pen wa doko desu ka? Let me, let me see if you have got it right. Pen wa doko desu ka? Pen wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Well, what about these things over here? Look at this and tell me where it is. Hako wa doko desu ka? That's right. Hako wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. So, well you can practice like this, show things where they are and then you can ask your partner where these things are located and placed. It is right here for you. Yubin kyoku wa doko desu ka? And you can replace yubin kyoku with whatever is given over here and practice. Well, now I have already explained this to you. Arimas is a verb which shows existence of small things, things of irregular shape and size at a certain point or place. And as is given over here, terubi wa asoko ni arimas. Terubi is over there. Ringo no ki wa soko ni Arimas. The apple tree is over there or there. So, you can just go through this. Now, we just did some locational nouns and the practice over here is kuruma wa doko desu ka? Kuruma wa genkan no mai ni arimasu. So, the pattern is noun 1 wa Noun two no ue shita naka mae ushiro ni ari mas. And if you want to ask a question, well, ka can be used over here or doko can be used. So, whichever you can practice this over here that is exactly how it is given. Kuruma wa doko desu ka? Kuruma wa genkan no mai ni arimasu. Genkan is a gate. Genkan no mai ni arimasu. Jiten sha wa doko desu ka? Jiten sha wa genkan no mai ni arimasu. Omocha wa doko desu ka? Omocha wa genkan no mai ni arimasu. Isu wa genkan no mai ni arimasu. 
本は玄関の前にあります。So like this you can practice of course over here with some of these omocha, isu and hon, genkan doesn't work. So you have all the others, kuruma no soba, heya no naka, elevator no mai, elevator is elevator, hondana no ue, hondana is a bookshelf, honya no tonari, honya is a bookstore, Kaidan no soba, kaidan is stairs and soba is nearby. So there are some new words over here, some new words, some old words which you have done. You can practice as I have told you just now. Now we have a small practice um, exercise for you here. You have to practice with your partner. Look at the picture and practice saying where the things are. Well, the first picture is you can see two people and this gentleman over here is pointing at something. It looks like a hospital over there. So well, what does he have to say? It is Byoin wa asoko ni arimasu. Last time we had done Byoin wa asoko des. Now over here exact location of the Byoin is, the Byoin is over there. So well, the next picture is, you have this gentleman here and he is thinking of scissors which is hasami and he wants to ask where is the hasami. Well, hasami wa doko desu ka? Hasami wa kami no shita ni arimasu. Kami is paper, kami no shita ni arimasu under the kami. So, you have another picture, you have some pens on a table, well, pen wa doko desu ka or pen wa doko ni arimasu ka and the answer is pen wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. So well, you can practice like this. Now you have two people here in the picture, a gentleman and a lady, well they are they are talking about something and he is pointing at this object over here, something over here. Well, what is it? What is the question? The lady asks, kaban wa doko desu ka? Now, doko you have done, you remember interrogative word doko which means where? Doko desu ka? And he says, kaban wa asoko desu. The kaban is over there or Kaban wa asoko ni arimasu or kaban wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. So any of these answers you can give to be more specific you can say kaban wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. This is just practice again and again for arimasu which is very very important because it is a proper verb and this as I told you earlier is not a complete verb and we cannot continue using this instead of arimas. Arimas tells you exactly where a place, where a thing is placed or located. So get used to arimas. Well, there is this picture over here, this is practice again for arimas. You have pencil, you have kaban, horn, isu, tsukue here in the room and someone can ask, you can ask your partner and the partner can answer or your partner can ask you and you can answer over here, pen wa doko desu ka, directly at the pen, pen wa doko desu ka, pen wa doko ni arimasu ka can also be used, pen wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Then we are pointing at the chair which is isu, isu wa tsukue no ushiro ni arimasu. I am repeating this again and again for you so that you just get used to arimasu, you get used to listening to arimasu, you get used to using arimasu instead of this. Of course, it is not that this is not going to be used after this, it is going to be used as you can see over here pen wa doko desu ka. 
but ni arimas is definitely going to be used more. So, please get used to this. Hi. Over here a book hon hon wa doko desu ka? Hon wa kaban no naka ni arimas. Kaban wa doko desu ka? Kaban wa isu no ue ni arimas. And then we have our table sukue wa doko desu ka? Tsukue, sukue, sukue wa doko desu ka? Well, sukue wa mado, mado is a window, mado no soba ni arimasu. This word soba, soba is new, soba, soba, soba means nearby. For example, you have these two things over here and you can ask kagi wa doko desu ka? Kagi wa pen no soba ni arimasu. It is close by. With reference to the table, this table is small. So, anything soba will be over here close by. Kagi wa pen no soba ni arimasu. Hako wa doko desu ka? Hako wa koko desu. Hako wa koko desu. Hako wa tsukue no ue ni Arimas. It is a little far away from here. So, with reference to the table, it is a little far. You cannot say soba. Soba is over here. Close by. Now, we have, well, there is a small radio conversation. Listen to this one and see how much you can understand. ケーキはどこにありますか。ケーキはテーブルの上にあります。いちごはケーキの上にあります。はい、いちごはケーキの上にあります。You heard the conversation just now? Let us see what you understood from there. Practice this and let me see. Pointing at the cake. Keiki wa doko ni arimasu ka? So, can you give me the answer? Keiki wa doko ni arimasu ka? Hai. Keiki wa teburu no ue ni arimasu. Teburu is also used which is table in English and tsukue in Japanese. So, you can either use tsukue or you can use teburu. Keiki wa Table no ue ni arimasu. Now let us see what they want to know about next. Well, rosoku, rosoku is candles. Rosoku wa doko desu ka? Rosoku wa keiki no ue ni arimasu. Rosoku wa doko desu ka? Rosoku wa keiki no ue ni arimasu. Or, as is given over here. Rosoku wa keiki no ue ni arimasu ka? Hai. Rosoku wa keiki no ue ni arimasu. Then we have, we have these two glasses over here and let us see. Koppu wa doko desu ka? Koppu. Koppu wa doko desu ka? Well, can you tell me where the cups are? Will you try? Koppu wa tsukue no ue ni arimasu. Now listen to this small radio conversation. Ano basketo no naka ni ringo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? Mutsu arimasu. Sono basketo mo mutsu ringo arimasu ka? Iie. Kono basket ni itsutsu arimasu. Well, this tells you about numbers. How many things are present in a certain thing or some place? Ano basket no naka ni ringo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? Mutsu arimasu. Sono basketo mo mutsuringo arimasu ka? Iie. Kono basketo ni 
5つあります。So, well, いくつ We did last time also. いくつ means how many. So, you count irregular things, irregular shaped things in いくつ You count them. So, well, we will practice this first and then I will ask you. So, this series of counters is used to count small objects from 1 to 10. The other counter that you did for small objects was ko if you remember, ikko, ikko, niko, sanko. So, this is also used, this is very, very informal, this, this counting method is also used for irregular um, objects. But, from 1 till 10, from 1 till 10, if you ask ikutsu desu ka, ikutsu question word ikutsu desu ka, then from 1 till 10, it is hitotsu, futatsu, mitsu, yotsu, itsutsu. Mutsu, Nanatsu, Yatsu, Koko, Koko, Notsu, and To, To or Juko. And after that, you have Ju Iko, as you did in the Ko series Ju Iko, Ju Niko, Ju Sanko. So, please. Hitotsu, futatsu, mitsu, yotsu is only from 1 till 10 and after that you have to take ko. But with ko, you can start with ikko also. 1 onwards you can start with hitotsu, futatsu, it is only till 10. So, now as you heard in the conversation, you can try doing this. Hitotsu, Futatsu, Mitsu, Yotsu, Itsutsu, Mutsu, Nanatsu, Yatsu, Kokonotsu, to. Till 10, you can count ju ikko and ikutsu. Ikutsu is the interrogative word, how many. So, you can do this later on at home. Quickly, we will practice this over here. Practice counting objects. How will you count? So, the objects are given, you have a small rubber an egg or a potato, small glasses or cups, things like apples, oranges, lemons, fruits generally, then small bottles can be counted, but long bottles cannot be counted, eatables like uh, donuts or cakes or, or small round pastries can be counted like this. So, ringo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? You can look at this and ask. Ringo wa ikutsu arimasu ka? Mitsu arimasu. 1, 2 and 3. Mitsu arimasu. So, you have this over here. Hitotsu, futatsu, yotsu, itsutsu and ikutsu. So, you can ask. Mikan wa ikutsu arimasu ka? Of course, this is not mikan, this is ringo. So, well, you could replace it with mikan and say futatsu arimasu. And you can practice like this with your partner. Ikutsu arimasu ka? Hitotsu arimasu. Or ikko arimasu. Ringo ikutsu arimasu ka? Yotsu arimasu. Or yonko arimasu. So, you can use both for counting small irregular shaped objects.
Now, we have been doing kanji all along. These kanji characters, these Chinese pictograms we have been doing and we have done quite a few characters today. Some very simple ones because we have done these uh, locational nouns. So, a couple of those for you we have ue. Ue means on top or above. Now, how has it come into being? It is very simple. Uh, the, the Chinese would show ue as some something a dot like this on something on the ground. So, later on it changed to ue like this. It is a three stroke character horizontal first, vertical later and then like this. So, this means ue means on top or above. Any time you look at this character, well it means something is on top. So, you have it here for you, ue over here, ue means upper, above or on top, a three stroke character. Then you have another one, this is another word that you have done today which is shita, shita meaning under or below. Now, how is that come into being? Well, underground like this a dot over here which was later made into this character which you can see on your screens. A straight line, a straight line as is given over here, a vertical line and then like this. So, it is like this, Ue is like this. So, please try to remember this and please one thing very important over here is that you have to remember the stroke order. The stroke order of a character is extremely important, otherwise it is difficult to go to the next character. When we start doing some complicated characters, we start writing in uh, Japanese, then you have to see that the stroke order is done properly, it is written properly. Well, this is also a three stroke character as you saw just now. Oh, well, the third one over here is Naka which you have already done. This is a four stroke character to be made like this 1, 2, 3 and 4 which means inside or passing through and this, this is this is from this is actually a board and something is passing through the board is how the character has come into being. So, well a quick revision over here we have ue, shita and naka for you three characters that we did just now. Now, we have with uh, these characters. Noboru, Noboru and the meanings are given here in black in the end. Noboru, Gesui, Oriru, Oriru is to come down from a staircase or get off a bus or a train. Chugoku is of course, China. Ichinichi ju all day long. Nihonju is all over Japan. And Kawakami, Kawakami is a name. So, these are some words how they are used in daily conversation. Well, these are this is vocabulary which these words we have done, these are all locational nouns which we just covered in this lesson. Ushiro, Naka, 
mai shita ue tonari soba yoko soto and all the others also there are lots of them so all others also we'll do them on and off in our next classes for the time being these you can remember so now well your time has come you have to work now at home look at this picture over here on your screen and tell me where all these things listed are located in this picture well all the pictures are for you here so many of them you can just tell me where they are located then you can practice your uh, uh, numbers here what we did with ikutsu how many are present over here in each picture also you can ask look at the picture ask how many are there and answer so all of it is given you can ask and you can answer then as we have been doing match words over here listed in group 1 with words listed in group b and then there are some pictures for you here write the words given below in hiragana so see we also have to practice how to write in hiragana and kanji so we will start with hiragana and then slowly also do kanji later look at the pictures and see what they are then all the kanji characters that we have done in our previous lessons well they all look very similar so try to give the readings for the kanji characters over here so please try to do that and with that I think I will finish today you have a lot of work to do at home a lot of things to remember and memorize so well we will finish here and meet again tomorrow so minasan mata ashita aimashou arigatou gozaimasu